So it's been 49 days since Assassin's Creed Nexus VR came out. Initially, I was really hyped as every YouTuber, news site, and VR user talked about the game. Since its announcement to be the pinnacle of AAA games coming to standalone VR. Being announced at Facebook Connect 2020 along with Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. I'm not going to act like I played every Assassin's Creed. With Ubisoft titles, I always preferred Rainbow Six, Tom Clancy titles, Splinter Cell, Watch Dogs, and Far Cry. The one Assassin's Creed I did play was Origins. With writing this review late is that Assassin's Creed Nexus VR felt lackluster compared to the other, the many other VR titles. The only exception is graphics wise, which on Quest 3 it looks phenomenal, but even then it's hindered by the use of application space warp. With everyone praising the game, I decided it'll be better once it gets patched up and my expectations get more settled. Before I talk about the graphics, first let's talk about the game itself. The best part of Nexus is that for Ubisoft's first entry into the VR, space nexus itself is an impressive first century the game includes characters from other assassin's creed titles like Ezio, cassandra and connor if you played or are you a fan of the assassin's creed games and seeing in them vr is a must buy the audio and music in the game is also top notch the game is up there with some of the better vr experiences that we've gotten for 2023 the replayability and fun factor going through the game make it worth buying if you can get a refer code or get it on sale it makes it all the better but it's it's not necessarily the most in-depth game, especially if you are new to VR or have been here for a long time. It's just enough content to keep you entertained. I really enjoyed my playthrough and would recommend it to others. The sections of the worlds that you are limited to are fun to just parkour around and look at. Considering this is all running inside a mobile SOC that is the Quest 2 and Quest 3 is really impressive. It shows that games, not just experiences, are possible on mobile VR headsets. The view distances especially on Quest 3, are fine. The worlds, although limited, do have a lot of character to them aesthetically. Now, with the Battle of Assassin's Creed Nexus, or before I get into it, I do notice that I am a little bit more harsh compared to the many other reviewers or store reviews that praise the game and label everything a must buy. But if you enjoy the game and don't take offense to someone else having a different opinion than yours, but then again, it's the internet, take what you will. Okay, the first hour or two of the game is some of the slowest and gruesome parts to go through. The SEO section is probably the worst out of the bunch, and Cassandra's and Connor's section Section are significantly better. In the Ezio section, the amount of loading screens, tutorials, and checkpoints it keeps telling you to go to is really off-putting. It starts giving me Starfield flashbacks with the pacing at the start and the constant loading screens with cutscenes, opening doors, and going into combat. Nexus combines a lot of gameplay elements from other games and it doesn't do anything particularly well aside from being a mediocre stealth game. Combat like in Assassin's Creed, combat like in Asgard's Wrath 2, with the parry system at times it becomes really janky and i've never been a big fan of the parry system itself compared to boner lab or blade and sorcery it's underwhelming parkour is fun but sometimes it's unresponsive, janky, or sometimes you end up clipping through objects with a black screen, or you won't go where you want to. On Quest 2, haptics are fine, versus on Quest 3, haptics are extremely subtle or non-existent. A game like Stride or Stride Fates that does everything wrong, story-wise, music, voice acting, the only thing it does well is parkour. And I would say, for me at least, that would be the gold standard for parkour movement in VR games with npcs in the world it's the same character models left and right and it's subtly off-putting to see the same character model talking to one another now with the graphics and performance so the biggest catch for nexus whether on quest 2 or quest 3 is the graphics for a standalone title it looks really impressive the level of detail is slightly higher than asgard's Wrath 2 but more in part due to the contrast of flowers trees and buildings in the game the view distance is really stunning to see on quest and not everything is filled with fog at least on quest 3 the environments are also really well detailed and make you feel as if you are in said time frame i really enjoyed just walking around and admiring the work the devs did to make the sections of the world have character it's not red matter 2 levels of graphic but the effort is there to 
showcase quest offerings. I would say that in Quest 2, the game is a lot less impressive with things like dynamic resolution, fixed foveated rendering, aliasing, shimmering, and spatial scaling being present in almost every part of the game. On Quest 2, it looks like the biggest factor holding it back is RAM, while on Quest 3, if you have Quest Game Optimizer or Side Quest, you can push it to 60Hz with application space warp, though it still suffers from stutters from time to time. At launch, the game, for me at least, was, was kind of a stutter fest and now being patched with getting update 1.0.1 they've acknowledged the stutters a lot of people said the game ran amazing and perfectly smooth until of course ubisoft themselves came out to acknowledge that the game does stutter in part due to application space warp itself and performance hiccups in certain areas of the game keep in mind every game that uses application space warp for me at least if you open the oculus menu too many times or or try to record little clips too quickly the game becomes unplayable and you have to restart your headset every time the game uses application space warp instead of rendering all 90 frames it has that and does 45 every game using application space warp looks like it runs at a high frame rate but it doesn't feel set frame rate it introduces really noticeable latency if you played games native at 72 90 or 120 it's night and day application space warp on nexus is probably the best implementation and tries to hide artifacts but the tech is not perfect if you move your head really quickly jump or see through transparent objects the negatives of application space warp really start to show if you snap or smooth turning ghosting becomes more noticeable whereas if you move in your own play space it's way less noticeable application space warp in my opinion is here to stay if we ever want to achieve pcvr graphics on standalone without sacrificing more battery and introducing more heat to the headset but on games like nexus where you're constantly moving around virtually and in your physical play space i think it was a poor implementation to insert it in this game games like grill legends and lego brick tales do better using application space warp mostly because most of the time your orientation of your head is constantly facing one way application space warp does best when no intense movement is required and you're sitting down it doesn't make the game unplayable by any means but you always see artifacts here and there like ghosting shimmering on certain textures flickering and sometimes degraded images and it gets really bad sometimes and you have to restart your headset to fix it on both headsets the game runs fine but hiccups in certain sections with or without recording on quest 3 nexus runs well if ubisoft really tried i do think they could achieve 70 2 hertz with a lowered resolution on quest 2 the biggest limiting factor is available memory with ram unlike asgard's rat 2 where regardless of playing on quest 2 or quest 3 the game is able to run perfectly fine on nexus playing on quest 2 feels like playing at a resolution of 480p on a 1080p screen it is not as great to play on quest 2 but still impressive it, it manages to run the game at all and from the good and bad of assassin's creed nexus vr is it the best game i've ever played on quest no not close but it's definitely a moment that looking back on 2023 it is a year where standalone vr users finally got content worth checking out nexus is a fun game but it's obvious it has its limitations with its use of application space warp if you have to choose a platform to play on quest 3 it's the obvious one to choose though it is backwards compatible to play on quest 2 quest 3 or quest pro personally nexus is a game the more you play the more its bad features will start to show at first you feel as if the world is ready for the taking but limitations of what quest can do start to show in the objectives you start to do seeing the same npc between worlds same dialogue limited characters parkour mechanics and level design start to look like the previous missions you completed it has that ubisoft charm of doing objectives with a marker telling you where to go all the time in a closed state the game is a fun experience i a long time vr user and i eventually got used to the mechanics and playstyle once you start comparing it to other games and with such a close release to Asgard's Rat 2 the flaws are really evident that this is more of Ubisoft dipping their toes more than anything hopefully the game gets continued updates or added content since it was meta funded if you look at other similar tries to bring AAA content to 
quests like Grid Legends or Medal of Honor. Hopefully they do not abandon the game after securing the bag from meta. I liked Assassin's Creed Nexus VR, but it leans more on the strength of the Assassin's Creed IP more than anything. And yeah, that's pretty much all. I want to hear your thoughts on the game in the comments because it's one of those games that hit but misses at the same time. If you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe for more similar content regarding VR, and yeah, until the next video, bye.